I've had quite a few people ask what are the best tools to purchase when you're looking at starting in mosaics. It can be a bit of a minefield out there with all the different tools available. Well in this video I'm going to be showing you the tools that I think you should start with if you're looking at starting in mosaics and I'm going to be showing you that right now. The first tool I'm going to show you is the Lepinet Double Wheeled Nippers and these are a good general tool to use in mosaics. Now there are cheaper versions of these and uh, I prefer to pay a bit extra and get the Lepinet brand. However, if your budget doesn't extend to paying that bit extra or you don't want to, then by all means have a look at uh, some of the generic brands out in the marketplace. I've had these for around about 10 or 12 years and they've worked really, really well. Now these will cut some ceramics, they will cut glass, uh, they will cut quite a lot of different materials including smalty and uh, I find that they're really uh, a good reasonably priced tool to use. So if you're not sure what you're going to be working in and you're starting out in mosaics then I would suggest a pair of these. So if you're going to be cutting glass they're quite easy to use for instance a little glass tire like this all you do is you put the uh, glass in between the uh, wheels there in the center and just push down on them and you can hold it like that the glass some people cut them which works as well you get into your own way of how you want to cut uh, the glass or how you want to use your own uh, tools and the same again just in the center there and again I can cut it like that and it cuts really really well and of course vitreous tiles uh, these have grooves on the back and I usually go in the opposite direction of the tools because uh, of the grooves because I can uh, do a nicer straight cut but that's a personal preference again put it in between you can hold it if you want a very straight cut and nip and you don't have to wear gloves I'm just wearing gloves because I've done a lot of nipping over the last few uh, months so I'm just trying to protect my hands a bit but it is personal preference there you go so that works really well and it also works for stained glass too. There you go. I usually have a container here if I uh, am going to be cutting stained glass or anything that might fly away and of course it works in cutting into a circle as well. They are a little bit clunky but uh, that is just something that you do get used to but they do a really nice job and then all we have to do is just take off the pointy bits like that and like I said you are better off having a container to cut into or for your shards to fly into like I say if you're starting out they're a good general all-round tool if you're not sure what material you're going to be working in now if you're going to be working a lot with glass then my suggestion would be to uh, purchase a pair of the Seabell double wheeled glass nipper. Now these have been designed specifically for glass only so don't use them on ceramics or soft ceramics or any other type of material. They are only designed for glass. If you use them on any other uh, type of material then you could damage them. These are really a lot more comfortable than the Lepinet double wheeled nippers but remember the Lepinet double wheeled nippers are a good general all-round nipper. Like I said these are specifically designed for glass and they are very comfortable and they have these green bumpers on the end here that actually help stop your shards from flying away which makes it a lot easier on you because you're going to have less cleaning up because the sh most of the shards will be just in a pile underneath where you're cutting. By all means you can still use a container to cut into but they won't fly everywhere like using the previous pair of nippers. I've already done a review on these and if you'd like to see that I'll put a link up the top of the screen here somewhere and uh, that will take you to my review and it goes into a lot more detail. But for cutting glass these work really really well and See how that kind of like grabbed it so if I'm cutting out a circle and you know I'll, I'll cut out another circle then see the shards do not fly everywhere and they are really a gem to use they are comfortable but bear in mind 
that these are a lighter tool and they have been designed for a specific reason which is to cut glass. Whereas the Lepinets are a good general all-rounder. And of course when you're cutting don't forget to wear your safety glasses, it is a must so that uh, you won't get any shards in your eyes or anything like that. And if you want to wear gloves that's also a good thing as well. So there you go, it cut it out really quite nicely. And again, you know, these are glass and they will cut those as well. See? Beautiful. And the same with uh, the vitreous tiles. How good is that? So these are really, really good, but remember, they are designed only to cut glass. Now, if you're going to be working with glass, you're going to probably need a glass scorer, and I've got a pencil glass scorer. They also come in a pistol grip and many other types of different versions, and the brand I like is Toyo. And then a pair of running pliers. Now, these are a plastic pair. They're actually quite cheap, and I prefer these over the metal pair. But there are people that prefer the metal type of running pliers, but I prefer the plastic ones. They're light and they just seem to work better for me than the metal ones, but that's a personal preference. I have here just a carpet tile and I'm using the reverse side. Now, while I like using a carpet tile is because it's cheap. And uh, I find when I'm scoring glass or uh, doing anything with glass, I find that it's a little bit cushioned as well, which means that I can help force a score line that I've scored on the glass to actually break, if need be. But uh, certainly if you're starting out and you don't want to purchase a grid system or anything like that, then a carpet tile will work well. Just bear in mind that any shards will sit on this carpet tile. So whereas the grid system, which is a, a like a, um, a plastic grid and it's got lots of uh, holes in it, squares in it, the shards will fall down into those uh, squares. So that is really the best way to go. But of course, if your funds don't allow you to purchase one of those, then I find a carpet tile works well. But whatever you do, do not get your hands and drag or scrape any of the shards up. Always uh, use a vacuum cleaner or use an edge, a straight edge to actually get rid of those shards because they will stick into the carpet tile. So just keep that in mind, but providing you're careful, this works really well. For a glass score, it's very, very easy to do. You don't push hard, you listen to the sound of the score on the glass. And like I say, there are different versions of this glass scorer. Some people prefer the pistol grip because it's easier to work with. But I was actually taught with the pencil grip, uh, so I find this works really well. And all I'm going to do is just start at the very start of the glass and one straight score right to the very end. So we're going to start here and just score to there. And some, some glass doesn't, you know, that score sound is not as high pitched as others. And all we're going to do is get our running pliers and there is a side that faces up and on this pair it's got a straight line there. And all we're going to do is we're going to put it on the edge of the score line. And it breaks it. So it does work really, really well. And I have a video on shaping and using a glass score if you're interested and uh, I'll put that up the top of the screen here somewhere in case you want to go and have a look at that. That goes into more detail, and there you go. It works really, really well. So these tools are not terribly expensive, but if you are going to be working with glass, my suggestion is to get these, and also your C-Bell double wheel glass nippers. The combination of these three will do probably 90, 95% of what you need to do. Now, if you're going to be cutting harder materials such as ceramic tile, crockery, porcelain, then this next tool is going to make cutting those materials easier. And these are the Seabell Max Pro Compound Nippers. 
Now these are probably the smallest and the lightest in the compound nipper range that I have ever seen that's out in the marketplace. And what makes these so special is the design of them. When you are cutting the harder materials, due to the design of the compound nippers, they multiply the force of your cut, which makes it easier to cut those harder materials. Now I like these because they are smaller. Unlike a lot of uh, the compound nippers in the marketplace, which are made for the tile industry, they are larger and they open up wider than these. So if you have smaller hands, then these will be easier to use than what I've seen out in the marketplace with the other compound nippers. Now, if you're looking for a full review of these, I go into a lot more detail. I'll put a uh, link in the top of the screen there somewhere, and that link will take you to the review. But I'll also put uh, the links in the description box of this video as well, in case you'd like to go to uh, those tools and uh, go for a more in-depth review on them. Now, when you purchase these, they come with curved blades and also straight blades, each doing a different type of cut. However, I won't go into too much detail about that, but I will say these will cut glass and they will also cut harder materials. But if you're going to be working specifically in glass, then that's where I would buy the Seabell double wheeled glass nippers. But if you're going to be doing a bit of glass and you're going to be working with harder material, then these will be fine for that. So if we are going to be cutting this particular tile in half, what I would generally do is, and this is another tool, but it works in with this tool here, I would use my score or breaker. Now these have a score wheel on the bottom and they have a pair of wings on the top which actually push down on either side of the score line and break the glass. But I find these can be a little bit cumbersome in using the scoring wheel. So what I tend to do is I use my glass scorer and I do it the same way as I showed you earlier when scoring the glass. And that is you start at one end and you go to the other side listening to that score sound. You don't have to push too hard. And that's it. Then I get these scorer breakers and I put the score line in between the jaws here over that metal lug there and just in like that. And the wings will break, push down on either side of that score line and break the tile. So it's very, very easy. These are not expensive to buy, but if you're working with uh, ceramics and you're going to be doing a little bit of scoring and breaking, then I would suggest that you buy a pair of these ones. Now, if I'm cutting out a circle, I would just go in and just nip around into the circle. Small nips are always the best. Sometimes I get a little bit anxious and I will be doing larger nips, but score is, uh, smaller nips are better. And this is not taking any effort at all or very little effort to actually do this. And then we can then tidy up as we go. We're taking off those little pointy bits and if I was more careful, you could probably get rid of those pointy bits as you go around in one go instead of going back on them. But because of this is just for a demonstration, I'm not being too fastidious about it. So there you go. It will also cut plates. So we'll put it on the side there and we'll go in. And again, it's requiring very little effort and you can go in and of course I'd be more accurate if I wanted specific section of, sections off but again we're just demonstrating this and it's really not taking much effort at all to do that and I'll just go across there so there you go so it works really quite well and the same with the larger design, it'll do that as well. Now another pair of nippers that you can go for, double wheeled nippers for cutting harder materials, are the Montelits. And these work really quite well, and these will also cut glass. However, 
one of the things you need to be aware of is that these wheels do not close, you know, do not really close close enough to cut some types of glass because here's some glass here, but it will not cut it. I'm pushing very hard, but it won't cut it because the jaws do not close enough. But for harder materials, it works really quite well. And the head is angled. You will find for certain jobs, these will work better for you than these. But if I had the choice of starting out and I wanted to get a pair of um, nippers that were going to uh, work for me and I didn't want to buy two pairs, I'd probably get this pair. And the reason being is these are lighter, these are not quite as large, and also they come with two blades. They do a couple of different types of cuts. Those blades being curved in this one now, and they come with a straight pair, as I said earlier, and uh, they will do different types of cutting. So I'd probably go for these over these, but these are still a very, very good tool. If we're cutting this plate, again, you have to be aware that these uh, wheels do not close close enough, so it may not even cut this plate, but let's have a look. Yeah, see, I'm pushing hard and it won't cut it, but it will probably cut it down here. Yeah, there you go. So you have to be aware of that. But I do enjoy using them. But they are heavier than the compound nippers, the uh, Seabell Max Pro compound nippers. But like everything, in any tool, there's always pros and cons. So there you go, really, really good. So like I said, I would probably go for these over the Montelids, but both are excellent in their cutting abilities. Now let's do a very quick overview of the tools. If you're going to be predominantly working in glass, then I would be buying a pair of Lepinet running pliers, a Toyo glass scorer, and a pair of Seabell double wheel glass nippers. Because those three tools will do probably 90% of your work. And then you can advance to other tools that are out in the marketplace. Now if you're going to be working with harder materials, I would be going for the Seabell Max Pro uh, compound nippers and a pair of the scorer breakers if you were going to be scoring and breaking tiles. If you're not and you're just going to be nipping, then you could just get away with those. But the chances are, if you're going to be working with tiles, ceramic tiles, you're going to be scoring and breaking those to cut them down to a size. If you want to be working with um, harder materials as well, you could go for the Montelits, which are a very good tool, but it depends which ones you're going to be uh, having preference to, whether it's going to be the compound nippers, the Seabell Max Pro compound nippers, or the Montelits. But like I said, my personal opinion is go for these because they will cut glass and uh, harder materials uh, without an issue. And they also come with two types of blades, and that's the curved and the square, uh, or the straight, I should say, and that will allow you to do different cuts as well. Now, if you're going to just start out and you're not sure what you're going to be working with and you just want something to start you off with, then I'll definitely be looking at the Lepinet double wheel snippers because again, these will cut glass, these will cut some ceramics, and these will cut crockery and glass, uh, but the only thing is that they are a bit clunky they are a bit heavier, but they'll certainly get you by. Now I find when I'm cutting ceramic tiles or some crockery that might be a bit difficult to shape, I use the water technique. Now this was something I came up with oh, probably around about eight years ago, and I find it works really well for me to get the shape that I'm actually after. It just makes it that bit easier. And all it is, is I'm cutting the tile, and I'm just using the Lepinets. You can use pretty well any uh, nipper that you want for cutting harder materials. And I find, and I'll just take a big chunk off that, and I find that when I'm cutting the tile, and it may not be as accurate as I want it to be, what I do is I put it in the water for a matter of just seconds, 
and I start cutting again. And you may have noticed that the sound is not as loud. But what's happening is, it seems to kind of soften the tile. And I find it just makes it a lot easier to be a little bit more accurate. See that? How you're not hearing that noise? But my edge is actually looking quite smooth or quite smoother. So that's all I do. And I find by putting it in the water, it really does make a difference in cutting. And I'll just go around here, just to get that like that. There you go. So that works really well for shaping harder ceramic tiles. Well, I hope this video has helped you on which tool to purchase for starting in mosaics. And if you have any of these tools already and you've used some and you've enjoyed using them, please put a comment down in the bottom of the comment section of the YouTube channel because that will help other people that haven't quite made up their mind on what tool to buy. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you did, please think about giving it a like. If you saw value in it, please share it far and wide. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing so that you can get the uh, notifications on when a video is released. And I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy. <music>